Imagine you're interviewing for your dream job and the recruiter tells you that the hiring manager thinks you're their top candidate and that an offer is coming, but they want to interview other candidates. Wait, what? Well, don't worry. In this video, I'm going to break down what exactly that means. Hey everybody, it's Brian from All Life After Layoff, and today I wanna to pull back the curtain on some recruiter insider information. But before we get too far into it, if you're interested in more career-related content, just like this one, directly from a corporate recruiter, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You might also wanna hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future content. So a client recently sent me an email about a situation that he is dealing with in his job search. And I wanna read through this scenario with you, and then we'll break it down step-by-step, step, what it means, and how he should handle it. So he says, my name is Jake, and due to burnout in a very toxic work environment, I resigned from my senior mid-level six-figure job in October of last year. I wasn't happy, I had gained 25 pounds in less than a year, and it wasn't worth the money, and your channel inspired me with my decision. Well, I'm glad to hear that my channel inspired that change. It sounds like you may have watched my video on signs to quit a job. So if you're in a work situation where you're gaining weight, you're losing weight, you're hair is turning grayer than it should be, it's falling out, you're physically manifesting symptoms due to the stress and due to a toxic work environment, that is certainly a major reason why you should consider leaving your, your employer and going and finding a new job. Furthermore, working in a toxic situation can actually set you back in your career. If you were a top performer somewhere, you join a new organization, doing relatively the same thing and suddenly they're making you feel like you're not capable, it can really damage your mental health as well. And it can set you back in your career. It can kind of send you on a spiral or put you on tilt, the kind of the old poker term, put you on tilt. After resigning, I invested in the bundle courses that you offer for the Ultimate Job Seeker Bootcamp and Resume Rocket Fuel about three months ago. So thank you for, uh, for purchasing those. I found much value in both of these courses and for a while was having recruiters reaching out to me on LinkedIn daily. However, things have slowed down. The good news is that I've had a few solid rounds of interviews in large part due to your education. So let's break this down just for a second. He's saying that he's got a lot of recruiters on LinkedIn reaching out to him for opportunities. And that's the preferable method if you're in job search. You want recruiters to be reaching out to you versus the other way around, submitting applications and hoping that you get noticed. Now, of course, there's ways that you can maximize your chances of getting noticed through a good resume. But ultimately, it, you're still competing with all the other candidates that are applying for those same jobs, not to mention recruiters are also doing that outreach. So if we can get the recruiter to contact us, it's a lot more powerful because you're skipping the line, you're getting right into the interviewing process. So that's great to hear that he's getting good responses through his LinkedIn. Now, I also wanna comment on the timing. If he was laid off in October and in, in November, he started his job search in earnest. Generally speaking, when we get to the end of the year, recruiting slows down on both the candidate side and the employer side. But then a lot of times company will have freezes at the end of the year where they don't fill additional recs as they try to meet their final numbers. So then after the first of the year forecast that headcounts get approved and there's usually a flurry of activity in the first quarter because now you've opened the floodgates and companies are starting to recruit again. On the flip side with the candidate, a lot of job seekers are not looking to make a move to a new employer around the holiday season for a lot of reasons that are probably pretty obvious but we generally find it difficult to recruit people, especially when there's bonuses that are paid out. People have to work till January 1 in order to get qualified for their bonus or some other milestone that they need to achieve and disruptions around the holiday season can be not the perfect timing. So it's generally a slow time. Now, job seekers can't take advantage of it because there aren't as many job seekers in the market, but there's also not as many jobs. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there. So I'm imagining now that's after the first of the year, hiring should start to pick up, but the market is cooling off on some level. There's an increase in layoffs and we're seeing less jobs being posted. Nonetheless, we should still see more job activity after the first of the year. So don't be too concerned if things slow down from October, really November through December. It's really a common thing in recruiting. In fact, I don't think I've worked at a recruiting job in my life where things didn't drastically slow down in November and December. So he says, the reason why I'm reaching out to you is that I'm very confused about a certain situation that's going on with one of the employers that I'm talking about, and I need to know if it's time to pivot my outlook. Interestingly enough, after watching your lectures and videos and updating my profile and resume, in November, a recruiter reached out to me for my dream job, which happened to be a director of growth, 
marketing in a pet supply company. So he's had five interviews with the team since then, and the recruiter texts me after each round, saying things along the lines of, you're the front runner and you're the number one choice. Now I'm assuming this is an internal corporate recruiter. I think that's, uh, if it's an internal corporate recruiter saying those things, it's pretty valuable. If it's an external a headhunter, it's maybe not as insightful, but generally speaking, that's a good sign. However, after completing the final interview, the recruiter texts me and says, you're still the hiring manager's favorite choice and she wants to give you an offer. However, she is getting pushed back to interview other candidates to get a comparison. The recruiter did say that they would have the decision made by the end of the year and now that time has come. So I'm not sure what to make of this. My friends and family are telling me that they're waiting on somebody better and stringing me along. Nonetheless, I would reach out and ask your thoughts on what I should do. Look forward to hearing from you. Okay, so Jake, there are a few reasons why a company may end up telling you that you're the front runner. However, we're gonna be interviewing other candidates. The first one could very well be that they're waiting for somebody better to come along and that they're stringing you along. I have been in scenarios where we have had candidates that have checked maybe three of the five boxes that were pretty good, but not perfect fits for what we were looking for. And they were offerable, but they weren't the top candidate in the hiring manager's mind. And if the candidate pools are weak, in other words, there's not a lot of good candidates to choose from, a hiring manager may take a risk on a candidate that doesn't truly fit the mold of what they were thinking they would want in that role. That is a possibility. However, I think that the languaging in what the recruiter, and again, I'm assuming this is an internal corporate recruiter, but I think the languaging would be different. I don't think that they would be saying things like, you're our top choice more importantly, the hiring manager is going to be making an offer. I think the languaging would probably be more along the lines of, you're still a candidate for this role. Once we finish our interviewing process, we'll be back in touch with you with next steps. And that's a little bit more neutral and probably more of an indicator that you're a plan B candidate than you would be a top candidate. If you just simply get rejected, you're obviously not a candidate at all, but if you haven't gotten rejected, chances are they are interviewing other people and wanna finish up those interviews. The second reason why they may be stringing this out a little longer than you want is that it's been difficult to get other candidates through the hiring process uh, with holiday seasons and hiring managers traveling and uh, trying to get all those logistics figured out. It can be a little difficult to get timing to work out. And a month long interview process is probably, unfortunately, not that uncommon. I do see it happen more than I'd like to admit. However, the one thing that I want to stress is that she's getting pushback to interview other candidates to get a comparison. Now, where's that pushback coming from? It's likely that the hiring manager liked this candidate and advocated to hire and then got pushed back from somewhere else. I would most likely say that it's probably from the boss's boss. So the boss's boss looked at it and said, how many candidates did you interview for this role? And she may have said one or two. And the boss said, I think you should look at additional candidates to make sure you're making the right choice. So they send them back to the drawing board. So that's probably the most common scenario. And in that event, it doesn't mean that you're not the top candidate. It just means that they wanna see a variety or a slate of candidates so that they can make the best possible choice. It also might come from the human resources department or potentially a talent acquisition department who wants to make sure that there's a diverse slate of candidates to look at. So one of the service level agreements I have with my hiring managers is when I'm opening up a new rec is that I try to submit at least five interview worthy candidates to the hiring manager in a, within a certain period of time. So I happen to get lucky right out of the gate and find a really strong candidate it can actually work to my disadvantage because now I have to keep that candidate warm while we go off and do a continued search. And as we go and do a continued search, this candidate may find other jobs and may end up moving on. So there is a risk there. And usually uh, as a recruiter, I would tell my hiring manager, like, hey, listen, we know what good looks like. So you should probably make a move on this candidate while we have them. However, we'll continue to recruit the position. So it looks like the hiring manager was forced with for lack of a better term into opening up the candidate pools again just to do another search so now the recruiter has to go off and do an entire search they have to source candidates they have to go through screening processes they have to get them through an entire panel interview and it could really significantly delay the hiring or the filling of that role unfortunately for you being on the receiving end of it there's not a whole lot that you can do other than wait it out if this is truly a dream job for you. Now, what would I advise in this situation? The most important thing is, is to never stop your job search until you have a confirmed start date 
And heck, I probably would even wait until my butt was in a seat in order to physically stop applying for jobs because we've seen a big uptick in companies who have pulled offers or rescinded offers at the last minute and it can really be catastrophic for somebody that's quit a job and is waiting. Not to mention, people tend to fall in love with opportunities and they get tunnel vision and they stop applying to other jobs because they're sure they have this one in the bag. The recruiter's telling them that the hiring manager loves them and offers coming and all this stuff. And I can't tell you the number of times that I've seen that happen only to have the candidate not get the offer and the position get closed or they fill it with somebody else completely out of the blue. And who knows, there may be a referral that comes in or an internal applicant at the last minute and that derails the interview plans with you and somebody else gets the offer. So what ends up happening then is you're stuck back at square one again. You have no pipeline of other interviews going on and you're starting your job search from scratch. And that can be very catastrophic for somebody who has been in an extended job search and falls in love with that one position. So please don't fall in love with any one job always be applying it's kind of like that glenn gary glenn ross where like always be sell or always be closing always be applying i should come up with some sort of tag phrase for that always be applying for jobs until your butt is physically in a seat because you don't want to be in this situation now for jacob i would be continuing my job search i would not be waiting around and i would be acting like a free agent so we always have to be applying 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 networking 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 doing all the things that were successful for you prior to this interview. Hopefully by now things have settled out. So Jacob, if you've gotten a response to this, you know, send me a note and let me know what's what's going on with that, that role. However, act like a free agent, keep your options open. Now, if you're somebody that's struggling with your job search and you haven't gotten deep into interview processes, then that's something that I specialize in. I do have a website called a lifeafterlayoff.com, which is loaded with tips and tricks all from an insider's perspective. So I'm a corporate recruiter. I give insider information about what goes on behind major corporate hiring processes. So I encourage you to go and check that out. I would also encourage you to check out some of my training courses. Jacob referenced the Ultimate Job Seeker Bootcamp, which is essentially interview training, and it takes you step by step through a major hiring process and ultimately teaches you how to ace each step and then land that dream offer. Then we have the Resume Rocket Fuel course, which is designed to teach you how to write a resume from a recruiter's perspective. It's gonna give you the best chance of getting noticed and into those interviewing processes. So if you're somebody that's just not getting a lot of interviews for the jobs that you're applying to, assuming that you're reasonably qualified, you wanna make sure that your resume is on point and Resume Rocket Fuel will help you do that. And if you wanna skip the recruiter altogether and have recruiters reaching out to you, which is again, the most preferred method of job search, then you wanna check out Unlocking LinkedIn because it'll teach you how to set up your LinkedIn and how to use the tool to get recruiters to start noticing you and bypass that interview process altogether. So check those courses out if you need more help. I also offer some limited one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions if you need a little bit more private guidance. So you can reach me through my website for that. All the links will be below in the course description. So happy job hunting. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.